All right, good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the Fruit of City Council meeting. Uh, the time is now 7.02. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. Deb, would you please call roll? Councillor Buck? Here. Councillor Lenhart? Here. Councillor Harvey? Here. Councillor Cry? Here. Councillor O'Brien is excused absent. Councillor Bremen? Here. All right, if you'd please all stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance is a flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we've got an agenda before us. Are there any uh, changes to that agenda? No changes to the agenda, Mr. Mayor, but for the record, I will note that there was a revision to resolution uh, 202132, which is on the administrative agenda, item 8B, and city manager Mike Bennett will explain the, the change to that. Okay. We have a motion. I move to accept tonight's agenda with slight change. <laughs> a second. <laughs> Councillor Lenhart? Yes. Councillor Harvey? Yes. Councillor Cry? Yes. Councillor Buck? Yes. Councillor Bremen? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. All right, and then we're gonna move into our uh, proclamations and presentations. So our first item is a proclamation uh, and it's uh, the City of Fruit of Veterans Day proclamation. Uh, do we be accepted by the American Legion Post 206? We've got Commander KJ Klein here to accept that. So we've asked Ken to read that for us. And then if you wanna say a few words after, we'd appreciate that. Whereas honorable services, whereas honorable service performed in the defense of our nation, and her cause in time of war is the highest form of citizenship. And whereas the men and women who have served in the armed forces of the United States of America have made major contributions towards the preservation of freedom of this nation and her people. And whereas the services performed by these millions of gallant Americans have demonstrated the willingness of our nation to meet the challenges of those wishing to subjugate individual determination through armed conflict. And whereas the nation and the free world are eternally grateful for the contributions of American veterans, men and women, to the advancement of the cause of an honorable world peace. And whereas for many that sacrifice has ended in permanent injury or death, yet their spirit remains in the continued preservation of our freedoms and the promise of liberty established as an example for all the oppressed persons of the world. Therefore, the City of Fruta City Council calls upon all citizens to observe Thursday, November 11th, 2021 with appropriate ceremonies in honor of those who have served to preserve the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy. All right, KJ. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. On behalf of American Legion Post 2006 here in Fruta, I just want to thank you guys for everything you do. Um, I feel like I say the same thing every year, but it's great to come back every year and accept this proclamation. Um, recognizing Veterans Day. Um, and just wanna remind everybody that there is a uh, Veterans Day service um, over at the Vietnam War Memorial at 11 a.m. on November 11th. So, and a big thanks to Deb for staying on top of me and mm -hmm. reminding me to do this. So I appreciate it, but thank you again. I appreciate it. And you brought a few people with you today too, yeah. correct? Yeah. Got quite a few right now. Why don't we have anybody that served in the armed forces stand for us so we can say thank you. All right, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, we've got um, uh, another pre a presentation uh, that we do 
Uh, we have different schools that we honor uh, for students and teachers uh, each month. So it's a, one of the biggest privileges us as a city council have is to honor those students and, and our local schools here. Um, and so tonight uh, for November 2021, we have Shelody Elementary School here. And so I'm going to come out front because it's a little easier. We've got certificates. I'm going to read off the names and the grades uh, of those that we have here. And then we have a, um, a pass to the community center uh, for each one of those recipients and also I heart fruit a button for them. So um, I'm gonna come out front and then we're gonna read off some of these names. All right, so we're gonna go in order here of what I've got. And so the first one is Cody Taggart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we got Stevie Sharman. Paige Thompson, second grade. Tim Wells, third grade. Danielle Westermeyer uh, uh, from Behavioral Care Professionals Intervention Intervention. Uh, we've got Molly Murch, and she's also a paraprofessional intervention. <laughs> okay. 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 Congratulations. That's awesome. I'm so jealous. <laughs> so jealous you get to do that. That's so cool. That's the best. That's the best part. Now they'll all clear out. It's a challenge to the boys right there. <laughs> Step it up. Some of the names of them. Yeah. <laughs> Another board. Congratulations. Hey, yeah, we'll see you. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's plenty of room in the front row now if anybody wants to move up. <laughs> No, oh, Shannon, you don't get to leave. <laughs> nice try. All right, with that, uh, we're going to move into our public participation time. And since we lost most of our public, I guess, uh, is there anybody in the audience? This is the time we set aside uh, for city council to listen to comments by the public uh, regarding items that do not otherwise appear on the agenda. Uh, generally, the city council will not discuss the issue and will not take action on this item. Uh, we please ask you to limit your comments to three minutes. So is there anybody in the audience that, that would like to speak on something not on the agenda? If you'd step up to the mic and state your name and address for the record, please. Archie Lopez, 1681 Ruby Lee Drive. And I just wanna open, open this meeting in prayer. So with the further ado, thank you, Father, for this time and for this opportunity. We thank you for each of these council members who are with us here tonight. And we thank you for those who are honored here tonight as well, our veterans and all the students and the faculty members. And Father, we just give you thanks for uh, the establishment of your government in this place, for just and right ruling to come from this place. And just for all that you do for us in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Archie. Is there anybody else in the audience that would like to speak on something not on the agenda? All right. Hearing none, I'm going to close public participation and we're going to move into the consent agenda. So these are items where all conditions or requirements had been agreed to or met prior to the time they come before council uh, for final action. All of these items will be approved by a single motion of the council. So with this, I'm going to open this up to public comment. Is there anybody that'd like to speak on anything on the consent agenda? All right. Hearing none, I'm going to bring it back to council. Does anybody have any questions or do we have a motion? Does Mike need to... Let us know what the changes are to it before we vote. Uh, the changes are on the last item in the administrative yeah. agenda that oh, I would administrative. Be, uh, I'm sorry. I'll be making a presentation on that item later. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Councillor Lenhart. Yes. Councillor Harvey. Yes. Councillor Bremen. Yes. Councillor Buck. Yes. Councillor Cry. Yes. Motion passes five zero. All right. Uh, with that, we're going to move into, we've got uh, two public hearings. One's a quasi-judicial hearing, and the second one is a legislative hearing. So our first one is our quasi-judicial hearing. It's for a special events liquor permit application. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, my name is Deb Woods, Deputy City Clerk for the City of Frida. I'm giving staff's presentation on the Greater Grand Junction Sports Commission's application for a special event liquor permit uh, to sell beer at the finish of the Rim Rock Marathon at the Fruita Community Center, located at 324 North Colson Street on Saturday, November 6th, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Your council packet contains all the documents provided by the Greater uh, GJ Sports Commission that are required to obtain a special event liquor permit, including, but not limited to, the event narrative, a diagram of the licensed premises, and a memorandum from the uh, Fruita Police Department that states that there is nothing which would prohibit the issuance of the license requested. Public hearing for this application was published in the Daily Sentinel on October 20th and posted at the location of the event on October 22nd. Staff recommends approval of the Greater Grand Junction Sports Commission's application subject to the following conditions. Number one, applicant will discontinue serving alcohol at 5.30 p.m. and patrons will disperse by 6 p.m. Two, the entire licensed premises shall be monitored closely and continuously by event staff in order to prevent alcohol from going into or out of the licensed area. Number three, all other procedures presented by the Greater Grand Junction Sports Commission will be followed. Number four, the licensee needs to be aware that they're solely responsible for control of the licensed premises in regard to alcohol possession, consumption, and adherence to state and municipal laws related to alcohol. That concludes my presentation, and Cassidy, Cassidy Veach 
Outreach and event coordinator with the Greater Grand Junction Sports Commission is here as the applicant's representative and can answer any questions that you may have. Kathy, did you want to say anything now or we're going to open up to public comment if anybody has any comment first? It's up to you. If you want to speak first, you can do that. Okay. All right. All right. With that, we're going to open it up to public comment. Is there anybody that'd like to speak on this item? All right. Hearing none, I'm going to bring it back to council. Does anybody have any questions or comments? <coughs> Do we have a motion? Move to approve the application for a special events permit for the Greater Grand Junction Sports Commission to sell and serve fermented malt beverages for the finish of the Rimrock Marathon at the Fruita Community Center on November 6, 2021 from 10 to 6 p.m. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. subject to the above conditions. Second. Councillor Buck? Yes. Councillor Cray? Yes. Councillor Harvey? Yes. Councillor Bremen? Yes. Councillor Linhart? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. That was easy. <laughs> That's the way we try to make it. <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you. We're looking forward to the event this weekend. So thanks for being here. I'll be out there. Run, I'll be running the half. So, so, so I'll be out there for a little, little bit of time. So, but no, thank you. All right. With that, we're going to move into our legislative hearings. Uh, we've got resolution 2021-31, a request to approve a resolution amending the 2021 annual budget. Um, and so we've got Margaret Sell here, our um, city clerk and finance director to present on this. That you heard request to approve the annual budget. <laughs> no, request to approve a resolution amending the 2021 annual budget with okay. a supplemental appropriation. I didn't think I'm not ready for that one tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't read the whole paragraph. I was just giving you an intro. <laughs> um, I was just trying to coincide that with my discussion here. <laughs> what you have before you is a supplemental budget amendment transferring funds um, within the sewer fund for some emergency repairs to the State Highway 6 sewer line. Uh, the public works crews went out there and discovered that the concrete line has corroded um, in several spots, causing some slow flows um, and needs some emergency repairs. It's a fairly expensive project due to its location and also the length of it after doing additional investigation. They found this is not a, limited to one spot. There are several spots in the concrete line. Um, funds are estimated at a hundred to a million dollars on repair of this project and the source of those funds we are looking at uh, about five hundred sixty seven thousand dollars from fund balance which would reduce the fund balance in the sewer fund from well, let me find that real quick three million at projected at or oh, excuse me three million at the end of last year to 2.4 million at the end of this year um, and the other funds will become from additional revenues that we receive from monthly charges for sewer charges, as well as plan investment fees. That's approximately 275,000. So the supplemental budget amendment is for 842,000. In addition, there is a um, in-house budget amendment that would transfer unspent funds from one of their existing sewer projects for about $800,000, $157,000. Uh, to this project to um, bring those improvement costs up to a million dollars. It has yet to go out to bid and get cost estimates on it, um, but we're trying to make sure that we don't have to come back to you again for that. Tim is here. If you have any technical questions on that sewer line breakage? <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we will, but let's open it up to public comment. We have to open it up to a public hearing first. So. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Hearing none, we'll clo close public comment and bring it back to council. Does anybody have any questions for Kim related to this or Margaret, if it's a numbers related? Not numbers related. Was it like age? Was it, you know, some fault in the concrete? What was, I don't know. Good evening, Kimberly Bullen, Public Works Director. Um, so it has been determined that it's an aged line. Uh, it's concrete, and we believe that the H2S has also been uh, a significant factor to the de degradation of this line. Um, we are in the middle of, we're, we're bypassing the 
first segment of line that we found, um, that will continue until we are under construction with installing the new line. Um, we're currently under design with our engineering staff and we'll, we're working with CDOT to get the right of way approval and we're looking at um, alignment of where we're gonna place the new line. And we are, we're also talking to suppliers because as I put in my budget presentation, the supply chain issues are significant. So we're trying to make sure that we can identify and, and get enough pipe and manholes to do the replacement. What's the timeline or we don't know yet? We don't know yet. Um, we are hopeful that we can get um, contract or under contract within the next three weeks. That's, that's aggressive. So yeah, we'll, we'll have more to share when we do that. Okay. Is there any way to, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're so polite. <laughs> uh, I guess I was just kind of wondering, like, how far up line and down line have we probed just to kind of explore if there's any other issues? And are we looking at just kind of replacing an, that entire chunk or kind of spots? Yeah, so um, when we first went in and, and we found that we had a blockage, we decided we wanted to try to camera as much of the line upstream and downstream. We've run into the same issue as Margaret indicated. We've got um, pipe failure. We've got holes in the top of the pipe, which causes debris to fall into the pipe. So we haven't been able to fully camera any full sex segment of that. Line. So uh, we are looking to replace that entire section um, six to eight blocks worth of sewer. Wow. In, the, in that process, do you think we'll, you'll be able to take that, obviously at some point, you'll be able to take a look up and down line and would that be, I mean, is that a good time to sort of investigate any other potential issues? Or? Um, most likely, well, well, we will abandon that line at some point. Okay. Um, okay. We'll be replacing that entire line with a brand new line, PV, uh, PVC line. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's just, it's the corrosion is just too great. We had gone back and forth about trying to go in and actually jet and clean the line, but we were worried that we would cause further damage and collapse of the line if we did that. Are there any uh, other concrete pipes that we are aware of about the same age that could, <laughs> this is a foreshadow? Close to the city. <laughs> uh, we, we do have a small percentage of concrete lines that exist in the city, um, as well as clay lines and the Orangeburg lines that we've, the city's been trying to aggressively replace when we do projects. Um, we, will, we will be cameraing those lines to, to see the condition of those as well. We, we haven't done that yet. Okay. Yeah. If, I, if I could just add, I wanna thank the staff for, it seems so loud. Um, <laughs> I want to thank the staff for, I, I think this, we came very close where this could have been a, a backflow, but uh, responding quickly and coming up with a workaround, it never overflowed um, and was something that we were able to avoid. The temporary solution is definitely something we want to be temporary. They're working with CDOT really quickly to look at an alternate, um, better alignment, as mentioned. And just to clarify, so you don't so it doesn't come across because this has all happened quickly that we have multiple lines. This is the same line we updated you on at the last meeting between Peach and Mulberry. And then we did go find that it, we needed, you know, we did look into, or we were looking into the significant significance of how far down the line as mentioned. So I, I just appreciate that work. And, um, but the same line we updated last meeting and then in the weekly update and all of those things. So yeah, not, I not multiple lines. That we did look at alternatives. We looked at pipe lining and availability of contractors in our vicinity. Um, there's not many people who do that work. And so to bring somebody maybe out of the Denver area is probably less likely because it, it isn't, well, it seems like a big section of line to do that type of a project and bring somebody that far for that work is probably not that feasible. Um, and I do wanna thank you guys for waiting until I got here as public works director to have this issue. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to your team for working all night long yeah. to make sure there weren't additional issues. Yeah. It was a test. You did, you did really well. <laughs> My staff has been amazing. So. All right, any other questions? Or do we have a motion? 
I move we adopt resolution 2021-31 amending the 2021 budget to appropriate additional funds in the sewer fund from the sources noted for emergency state highway six sewer line repairs. Second. Councillor Cry? Yes. Councillor Lenhart? Yes. Councillor Bremen? Yes. Councillor Harvey? Yes. Councillor Buck? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. All right, well, thank you. Uh, we're gonna be moving into our administrative agenda. Uh, so we've got three different uh, budget presentations tonight. So the first one we've got is our personnel issues presentation. Uh, Odette Brock, our human resources director is presenting on this. I don't know if I like the word personnel issues, right? Items. That's what I mean. <laughs> Said he had this all working flawlessly. Well, <laughs> that was before he had to deal with me. <laughs> I'm the problem child, apparently. No, Tom's waiting his turn. Don't worry. <laughs> it's okay, Shannon. I just told you I needed help. I don't know what I did. Everything was great just a minute ago. And we know Shannon's presentation will be flawless. It'll be the one that. I think. Don't ask me what I did. Good evening, Mayor and City Councilors. I'm Odette Brock, Human Resource Director for the City of Fruta, and I'm here to present the 2022 HR Budget Overview. Um, just wanted to start with a few accomplishments for 2021. Implemented the Equal Pay Act and Healthy Families Workplace Act to comply with the new Colorado laws and regulations, and included that in the updated handbook, which will be um, issued to all employees by the end of the year. Successfully recruited and filled several full-time and part-time positions. Um, nine positions were vacated and filled due to turnover or promotion in 2021. And you can see what those positions are um, as listed. In addition, new positions that were filled in 2021 include the following. The assistant to the city manager became a full-time position. Um, a maintenance custodian, custodian for public works uh, full-time position an engineering intern, which is a seasonal position, um, three seasonal employees in public works and six seasonal employees in parks. And then in addition to that, there were several part-time and seasonal positions at the Fruita Community Center that were filled as needed. The 2021 performance measures. Um, the first one was reduce recruitment costs by exploring other advertising avenues, such as Indeed, professional publications and websites. Um, the status of that is we continue to identify cost-effective recruitment avenues in 2022 without impacting recruitment efforts. I will say that 2021 has been a challenging staffing year. Um, some positions were able to fill fairly easily and some positions not so much. We had a very difficult time with our seasonal positions this year. We were lucky to get um, a few good employees, um, one returning employee seasonal employee to come back. But um, I think recruitment is gonna continue to be a challenge. So we need to find some creative avenues to recruit um, and retain employees. In addition to that, we're working on succession planning, um, trying to identify those staff that we already have um, that could fill some vacancies that may be coming um, in the next three to five years due to retirement. So we're, we're continuing to work on that part as well. Um, second performance measure was to onboard all full-time and permanent part-time employees with an orientation with the human resource director and the city manager. That has been um, quite successful. Um, employees come in and do a one-on-one -on -one with me for benefits, policies, um, anything to do with their employment paydays, those kind of things. And then they also do um, an orientation with Mike Bennett, who talks about the structure of the city, 
poor behaviors and such. So um, employees seem to really enjoy that and um, it helps us connect with our employees. And the um, newest performance measure will be to conduct a benefit survey to measure employee satisfaction with the city's benefit package. We did one of these um, two years ago and um, we're going to do another one in 2022 to make sure um, how our employees feel about our benefits. For 2022, new positions that will be filled are communications and engagement specialist position. That'll be a full-time position. A maintenance worker one in public works. Um, that's currently a conversion from a seasonal to a full-time employee. An engineering technician, which is another full-time position. And a parks worker, which will be a conversion from part-time to a full-time position as well. 2022 um, increases in minimum wage. Minimum wage will be increased to $12.56 per hour um, beginning January 1st, 2022. I should note that this is still in the comment period with the Department of Labor, but is it, it, is, it is expected that the $12.56 will be the new minimum wage beginning in January. Um, in addition to that increases, we funded an average of 5% a five market rate adjustment based on each position and the um, individual market. We adjusted it to market. Now, not everybody got a 5%, some got a 5%, some got less than that, depending upon where they fell in the market. Um, and some, we had a couple that um, won't get anything due to being at 100% or more of the market. Um, something new that we're going to do this year is the city will implement a 1.5% match to all full-time employees who contribute at least 1.5% to the 457 plan. Um, this um, will go from our 4.5 that we currently get that we just give employees um, and it'll add another 1.5, which will make our match 6%. We've been hearing from our employees that they really wanted um, to see something, um, some additional match in our 401. So this will take place um, in January, 2022. Our health, dental and vision insurance our health insurance and our benefit package continues to be our number one recruiting tool. Health insurance premiums will increase by 4.5% this year, which was great. It's um, almost half of what our increase was last year. So we were pretty excited with the 4.5%. We'll stay with the same plan, which is our CEBT PPO core plan, which seems to um, be a, a good robust plan for our employees. Um, we will also continue with our same dental, which is dental den Delta Dental and our vision insurance. And there is no increase in premium for 2022 for those two plans. And that is all I have on the HR front, unless you have any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Odette? Thank you, Odette. Thank you very much. All right, our next presentation is Parks and Recreation presentation. We've got uh, Shannon Vass and our uh, assistant to the city manager presenting on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the city council. Um, Shannon Vass, an assistant to the city manager. I'm very excited to be presenting the Parks and Recreation Department um, 2022 proposed budget. Um, in lieu of a department director, um, I will be presenting the budget. So I will say to save any really difficult questions for Mark, he does start here in a few weeks. So um, no, it's been uh, coming off the heels of the frost uh, master plan update. It has been exciting. Uh, to work on this uh, budget uh, with Margaret and Tom and his staff as well. I think we've worked on it probably the most right behind Public Works. Uh, but yeah, excited to uh, share the budget. So let me just pull my PowerPoint real quick. <laughs> so uh, starting off with the accomplishments, um, as we all know, in April, early this year, the Superior City Council adopted our Parks, Health, Recreation, Open Space, and Trails Master Plan. Uh, this master plan identified a number of uh, priority projects for the upcoming decade for our Parks and Recreation Department, uh, high priority, medium priority, and uh, low priority as well. So um, all of the projects that you'll see in the 2022 proposed budget uh, were identified um, in the Frost Plan and also are in there as a result of the feedback from the community survey. So um, excited to have that adopted and excited to start implementing uh, the components of the Frost Plan. 
Um, other accomplishments, and I'm just uh, thinking of all Parks and Rec general fund programs here. Um, another accomplishment that uh, staff is certainly proud of is uh, this summer, um, the Wellspring Project, the Arts and Culture Board uh, got a grant from an arts and society um, uh, organization to fund the Wellspring Project where uh, 13 students from Fruita Middle School attended a seven day uh, event learning about water issues in the West. Um, the end result was uh, after they went through, you know, uh, different lectures and a, a rafting trip along the Corral River. Um, they painted uh, two murals, which are under the um, 6 of 50 underpass on the, on the Little Salt Wash Trail. Uh, one pictured below here, and it kind of depicts uh, two aspects of water issues, one with a very healthy ecosystem, good vegetation, plenty of water, the other um, kind of what it would look like with significant drought and whatnot. So um, that's, that's an accomplishment this year and one that uh, um, we were excited uh, to have the uh, students participate in uh, this summer. Uh, another accomplishment we, which we've talked a lot about um, uh, this year is uh, we finally finished, uh, the Arts and Culture Board and staff uh, finally finished the artwork in the Highway 340 Roundabouts project. Uh, if you remember last year, the City Council did approve um, finishing the landscape and after that our Arts and Culture Board and staff uh, were able to fundraise all the money needed to uh, be able to get those projects or get those sculptures created and uh, fitted into the roundabout. So very exciting project and one that I know staff is certainly proud of in the communities as well. Um, another accomplishment that we have in the uh, for all programs, um, although this is kind of the end of last year, uh, the Fruity Youth Action Council was busy. They planned uh, to paint this mural that you see at Dinosaur Journey with Rise Above Colorado. Uh, Rise Above Colorado is kind of a statewide uh, drug prevention organization that encourages kids to uh, choose drug-free lifestyle and provides them with uh, the resources needed to do so. Um, so this was another one where students were actively involved and partnered with uh, Rise Above Colorado to, to paint this mural and of course learn more about um, how to live drug free. Uh, so moving on to the 2022 Parks and Recreation budget highlights, um, I'm going to go over uh, parks, or parks, Parks and Recreation Administration, Open Space and Trails, and then Tom will cover the general fund recreation programs. Uh, so looking at the proposed budget for next year, we have about $1.35 million for our Parks and Recreation General Fund. Uh, most of that, as you can see, is in parks. Uh, the rest is in administration and then open space and trails and a few other uh, areas uh, as well. Um, budgets are expected to remain relatively flat. Uh, that's mostly because we are closing out some of those uh, programs. Um, so even though we do have some increases in line items, our operating expenses are projected to increase uh, due to some decreases in our special projects like the Wellspring Project. And of course, uh, some uh, decreases in capital equipment. Um, the budget is relatively gonna remain flat for next year as it's currently proposed. Uh, goals of the Parks and Recreation Department administration. Um, as I briefly touched upon earlier, staff will start implementing uh, the improvements and plans as outlined in the Frost Master Plan. And also, um, one of the goals in there is to improve operations for staff of parks, open space and trails and recreation. And uh, this is really an emphasis on uh, returning back to uh, professional development levels and getting staff trained kind of in all areas, of parks and open space. Uh, budget highlights, as Odie mentioned, uh, we did onboard or change a few positions this year. Um, the administrative technician used to be a full-time position within this fund. Um, that sense has went down to a uh, part-time position and it's split equally between the general fund and the Fruita Community Center Fund. And um, so you'll see a decrease in full-time staff and then an increase in part-time staff. And then in the special events program, we also added a special events coordinator who's dedicated to special events and marketing. And that too is also split between the general fund and the Fruita Community Center Fund, about 50-50. Um, goals for next year for parks, moving on from the administration side. Um, uh, parks crews wanna continue uh, to be well-trained in all facets of park services. Um, another thing that our crews have been working on, um, along with other departments, is continue to use the work order system to their benefit and, of course, to better track um, their time and hours spent on park maintenance and repair. And uh, one thing that uh, the, the staff over there has really wanted to do for several years was to create kind of a parks maintenance plan. There's a lot of institutional knowledge over there. Um, in our parks department, so if any of those people were ever to leave, you'd probably have a huge gap, you know, just basic basic parks maintenance things. So I think next year is their goal to kind of solidify an actual maintenance plan for all of our parks. So um, everyone has, or everyone knows uh, kind of best practices for maintenance of our existing parks. 
Um, again, uh, budget highlights, as Odie mentioned, we are moving a seasonal part-time or yeah, seasonal part-time parks maintenance worker to a full-time next year. And of course, uh, we're increasing a few miscellaneous line items um, to help with service delivery. And uh, as pretty reflective upon all of our other departments as well, we are anticipating some increased uh, utility costs and fuel costs as well. Uh, moving on to open space, again, this is pretty much the same goals as for our parks department. The only uh, difference being that uh, we wanna continue to uh, better track the amount of time spent on open spaces, our expenses um, on that. If you'll remember, open space was actually, this was either the first or second year that we had it in our budget as a separate program for parks. So staff is gonna try to continue to um, learn uh, how those expenses are spread out and how they should be spread out between parks and open spaces and what should go where. So that's really the only difference from the uh, parks goals. Uh, budget highlights, <clears throat> we are continuing to contribute $5,000 to the Mace County uh, Trails Maintenance Crew. Uh, they do work almost year round on all of our uh, public lands, um, notably Cocopelli, North Fruita Desert, um, some of those areas as well. They're funded for, I believe, over two years um, at their current level. So we continue to provide a contribution to them um, that's supported through Mace County Public Health and uh, the Trails Coordinator actually supervises them as well. Uh, we also have some money in there for um, zeroscaping uh, portions of the trail along Highway 6 and 50. Um, our parks crews have told us that there are some places on the trail that are very difficult to irrigate because of how much rock is underneath the soil. So usually when they do try to irrigate, they have to overwater just because it doesn't absorb within the soil due to all that rock. So they like to zero scape uh, certain portions of that um, to cut down on water use and of course um, uh, make it look better because we won't have to water as much where it's already difficult to water. And our open space and trails also continue to budget uh, tamarisk and weed removal. We are increasing our tamarisk uh, removal budget for next year. So I know Sam will be presenting on these at the next uh, at the next uh, city council meeting, but I did want to briefly touch upon some of the capital projects uh, that is in the budget right now as far as parks and recreation. Um, there is a lot of them are spread out, so I figured I'd just throw them in one place, and if we have any questions, we can go from there. Um, so. As identified in the frost plan, a number of these projects um, were high priorities among our residents. Uh, the first project we have in there is a design of a trail connection between the state park and the Red Clips subdivision. Um, this is funded primarily through a Carl River Fund donation that they've allowed us to keep $90,000 and also um, use for this design. Uh, this will eventually, once designed, I believe will establish a trail connection uh, under Highway 340 right before you head over the bridge heading towards the monument when you're heading south. Um, so that's in there, uh, $90,000. And this is one of five uh, trail connections that is really prioritized in the frost plan, the other being Raptor Road, and of course, finalizing the trail connections um, along the Little Salt Wash uh, north of Otley Avenue. But this is uh, one of the five that are highly prioritized. Um, in the Conservation Trust Fund budget, uh, we have $100,000 for playground replacement at Prospector Park. Um, this is a swing set and a playground replacement. And yes, playground equipment is that expensive, I'm told. <laughs> so the big one, uh, $1.3 million is currently budgeted for Reed Park renovations in our capital projects budget. Um, right now, as it currently sits in our budget, it's funded through a mix of post-impact fees, uh, Conservation Trust Fund revenues, and GOCO grant. Um, the GOCO grant, Mike and I have met with GOCO staff and our region representative, and um, we can apply for a grant called a Community Impact Grant. GOCO has kind of consolidated all of their grants into kind of one. So it is a very competitive grant process, but I think even this last cycle, they did fund a park project in Yuri that kind of sounded very similar to Reed Park. Um, it was getting a lot of use due to new events. Um, it was kind of had some outdated equipment. So we will apply for this grant, but uh, as it currently sits in there, it is not contingent upon grant funding, but grant funding is a large portion of the renovation. Um, I wanna to touch upon what the renovations include. Of course, this is from the frost plant, so it's only a conceptual um, design that was in there, but uh, really we're gonna replace uh, the restroom facilities and make them ADA compliant, because I believe right now they're not. Um, replacement of two playground sets that currently, or sets that currently sit there. We'll add a small shelter on the north side of the park, which I believe was removed several years ago um, due to deterioration. And then uh, of course the skate park kind of on the, what would that be the Southwest side 
of the park um, is one of the major improvements. And then apart from that, we have a bunch of miscellaneous improvements, electrical upgrades to accommodate the increased use of events, uh, the ADA requirements, et cetera. Um, I did wanna include this just so we can kind of visualize um, the conceptual design that is in the frost plan. This is if you're kind of looking west um, and right here is Maple Street looking west towards Elm. So the big additions, as you know, the skate park over here on the southwest side, the north shelter, and then adding some uh, <clears throat> or replacing the playground equipment and then making some other changes. So uh, that's the big project we have in our capital projects budget right now. Um, the other $1.3 million for the Reed Park renovation. Finally, we are budgeting $50,000 to really rehabilitate the Fruita Bike Park. Um, it's it's in desperate need, uh, you know, every time it rains and uh, it gets a lot of use as well, kind of those jumps deteriorate and um, maintenance is, uh, it, it's, it's kind of labor intensive maintenance to repair those. So um, we are budgeting uh, 50,000, which will um, improve the dirt jumps, the beginner and the intermediate dirt jumps, and of course the pump track and the skills area as well. Um, our parks crews are excited about this because uh, instead of just having uh, dirt jumps, um, they'll add wood lips, features to it. So that should help significantly with the maintenance and they'll have to spend less time on it uh, moving forward. We did get a proposal from uh, single tracks and this is one of the photos that were on there. Um, yeah, they have the ability to make all these wood lips which cut down on the maintenance costs quite a bit. And I think also um, increases the fun for the <laughs> user. Not that I've been out there several times. <laughs> with that, that concludes uh, my presentation. Um, any questions before I turn it over to the FCC fund? I do have a question about the skate park. Is it going to be like a real skate park, like concrete? It is proposed to be an in-ground, yeah, concrete skate park, 17,000 square feet, about 14,000 is rideable. Um, Sam is on. He can tell me if that's realistic <laughs> based upon the budget, but it's one thing we'll probably have to do as we move forward, because I believe we have a design of Reed Park, but not with the skate park currently in it. So that's one thing we'll probably have to specialty design because it's such a specialized feature, I would imagine. Okay. Any other questions for Shannon? All right, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. All right, with that, we're gonna move into our third presentation, the Community Center Fund and uh, General Fund Recreation Programs. Uh, Tom Casale, our Recreation Superintendent, is here to present on this. Paul Shannon up there. Mr. Mayor and uh, members of council, I'm here to present uh, two budgets. One is the Fruit of Community Center budget. Um, and then also the general fund recreation budget. So we have the admin section that um, Shannon presented to you, but within the general fund, we also still have um, athletics activities and special events budget. So I'll be covering both of those. Um, uh, but what I want to do is go over our accomplishments. Um, first thing is, is you have to give a shout out to the, the, the staff, um, the recreation staff. Um, had a lot of stuff thrown in our ways, a lot of, res a lot of restrictions and, uh, those guys did not take no for an answer and keep, kept on producing high quality uh, programs and events. So uh, we have a great staff over there. Um, and so uh, that's definitely accomplishment for everything that they've been through. And they've actually kept up a good positive attitude. We've got a great vibe over at the community center right now. So other things is uh, in January, we did celebrate our 10 year anniversary, uh, COVID style, which just said, hey, it's our 10 year anniversary. <laughs> that's about it. Uh, as Shannon mentioned, we did adopt the uh, master plan. Um, we were able to finally come back with the in-person special events starting with the Easter egg scramble. Um, we did have a, a full-time special events coordinator and marketing. Um, and then we downgraded the admin tech to a part-time position. Um, that seems to be working out well. Um, we uh, created a special event guide for third-party special event coordinators. That's on the website. Plus we got rid of the 27 page application. 
uh, just for special events. It's now a web form, which uh, is not nearly as daunting. <laughs> um, and then we had a high participation rate in youth programming, um, record registration numbers for Sue uh youth golf and tennis. And that started in June once we got through all the restrictions. So I um, just want to kind of give you just a brief overview of where we're at. Uh, we're definitely improving. We're not out of the woods yet. Uh, we're at 62% visits compared to 2019. Um, those first couple months when we were still under restrictions and capacity restrictions, uh, we were definitely a lot lower, but since June, we've been at 80% 80, 80 or better. Uh, we were at 90% in September. Um, so we're, we're getting there. Um, we're not out of the woods yet, but we are uh, on the rebound. Uh, same thing with uh, past revenues. We're at 76% when compared to 2019. Um, since May, we've been at 87%. So once the mask mandates and the restrictions got down there, uh, people were coming back. So uh, The FCC program revenue is at 74%. Um, we have to remember that we weren't able to do in-person swim lessons until June. So fall or our spring season is usually pretty busy for swim lessons. We weren't able to do it um, besides doing one-on-one -on -one private lessons. So um, we're at 74% now, uh, with, despite those restrictions. Um, and then uh, the revenue projections that we did present for um, 2021, we have exceeded all of those revenue projections for passes um, and programs. Uh, just a quick review of where we're at expense-wise. Uh, we're doing really well. We did have some building maintenance issues that we had to cover this year, so we're a little high operating expenses we stayed in line with where we need to be um it was a light year for capital we didn't budget a whole lot look basically they were federally mandated um, our ada lift needed to be repaired and replaced we got to a pool it was what they needed to pay for the one we used before the rec center was built 100 so uh, but we also had uh, to replace the drain covers for the hot tub and the outdoor pool when we did the pool replaster project we replaced the indoor drain covers that year and um, then we did get new meeting room furniture, pretty light uh, bill. Um, general fund pro program registration fees will exceed uh, revenue projections. Um, revenue projections were reduced in 2021 due to uncertainty of COVID. Uh, we were unable to host boys basketball. We went viral with Sweetheart. We got about 100 uh, participants for Sweetheart when we're usually north of 400 for that race. Um, and we finally are now having adult leagues um, that started this this uh, this fall. And then we got to see the return of uh, Thursday night concerts, 3rd of July fireworks, um, a delayed but successful Mike of the Shipper Festival. Uh, over here, general fund expenses. Well, right where we need to be. Uh, moving on to the 2022 budget. Um, with the overall participation improving, our goal was to restore line items um, that were cut in 2020 due to uncertainty of COVID. This year, we have a lot of capital projects that we need to get taken care of and put into the next slide. Uh, and then also in the budget, what we did is we took some of the special events monies that were used out of the youth activities and we created a special uh, additional uh, an additional line item, I guess, for, for just special events. So there's no confusion on what we're spending there. So the FCC special events, which a special event coordinator will um, will be so special events is still split 50-50 between the general fund and the FCC. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of capital. Um, the big thing is the indoor pool filter. I put a picture there. Um, all of that plumbing and everything needs to come out in order to get the new filter in. When you cut the old filter out, the new filter needs to come in. So that's why that price tag is pretty high. Um, I'll show you what we have going there. The perimeter deck drains was a project that was scheduled for 2019 that we passed on. But it's, it's, it's shelf life and needs to be replaced. Um, we also on fitness, we have uh, five new uh, cycle bikes. We're gonna go ahead and um, replace five at a time and kind of do it on a cycle instead of being hit with all, replacing all the bikes all at once. So uh, we have a hip abductor machine, which is gonna be a new piece of equipment. 
uh, free motion cable bike, which will also be new. And then we're gonna replace one of our Stairmasters that's been here since, since 2015. Yeah. So that's um, due to be replaced. And then the C3 machine and I scrub in the building. Uh, the community center, community center fund balance is the 1% use sales and use tax. 40% is used for operations, 60% is used for capital expenses. Uh, we did have to use um, some of the capital funds in this budget for 2020, 21, and 22, um, but it's not supposed to, it's, it's not the norm. Uh, but our current reserves is we have 1 million to use for future improvements to the Purdue Community Center, 1.9 million in reserves for unassigned fund balance for emergencies. So in general, with performance measures, staff was told to look through the master plan to come up with their performance measures. Um, so the Purdue Community Center and the general fund recreation budget were developed using that information in response to some of the performance measures. Uh, there's one similar theme throughout the master plan. Uh, some of the things we're going to focus on is uh, cost recovery from special events and programs. All right. Any questions? Oh, Lori, did you have a question? No. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Tom? All right. Keep up. Keep up the good work. I'm glad Kyle got that 27-page application off from there. I'm glad Kyle got that 27-page application because he had fun filling that out for the downtown board. Go go online. It's much faster. It's a web form. All right. Well, thank you. All right, with that, we're gonna move into our city manager's report. Oh, he's got a presentation too. Oh, no. oh, God. oh I'm looking at the resolution, sorry. I skipped over the resolution 2021-32, a request to approve a resolution amending 2021 budget and transferring funds. I saw your name on there, sorry, I jumped ahead. Oh, no problem. Well, thank you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, as we've discussed before, we've been working with EPS Economic Planning Solutions who did our community profile during the comprehensive plan to do a further uh, two-part uh, project. One is a housing needs assessment to identify all the very specific detail related to the fruit of workforce, the uh, percentages of uh, the workforce at what percentages of AMI categories that they are in, the average median income, what percentage of cost burden they are in so that we can map out exactly the, the accurate picture of where we stand related to uh, the housing uh, issues that, that we see in our community so that council can then take that information, um, both educate the community, but also set goals and strategies for addressing. The second part of that project is for them to do a deep dive in the information you all received from Butler Snow in uh, detailing and setting up a regulatory fee uh, process and going through a process for that, which takes quite a bit of, of work, uh, quite a bit of engagement and, and, uh, and accuracy to, to actually put that forward. So the, the project scope um, is uh, is very detailed for those two two things, and we've asked them to separate the project into two projects and two contracts. Uh, the reason we've asked for that, and the first contract is twenty nine thousand four hundred and thirty dollars. The second contract is fifty nine thousand seven hundred and eighty. I had shared an update with you all about you know as we got a draft of of the of the scope of that work, and some of the pieces that were missing were the being on site for presentations or vir and or virtual pres presentations. So that's sort of the reason why the expense has gone up a little bit. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean we will spend all that. It just gives us the option in those contracts without having to come back uh, for more requests for funds just to have them come and engage, uh, whether it's with the technical advisory committee, with the city council um, and with the staff. So, the other reason we've asked for two requests is we believe that we would have a significant chance in applying for 
an administrative grant with the Department of Local Affairs for $25,000 for the second project. So reducing that 59,780 by 25,000 if we're successful in, in receiving that grant. Uh, so tonight, what we're asking is to take uh, the full amount from contingency and for this reason. We, we want phase one to start now so that they can have that and you're gonna you can you can give me a smile on this but so that the results can be the beginning of december so we went from a little bit the end of november but we're looking at probably the very beginning of december for phase one so that we can get that work moving where they would immediately start phase two um, trying to meet the time frame that the council would like to to meet and working through this process overall that means if we get the grant, even if we move the full amount from contingency tonight, obviously we would not spend the full amount. We would we would spend 25,000 less. Phase two would start during December either way, but it, and then it would carry over into next year. It would not definitely not finish by the end of December. Um, so we're requesting uh, that council transfer, transfer 89,250 uh, for this project from the general fund contingency fund. So that's the first request that we that we request action on from the city council and recommend approval for. The second request is that the council would approve the mayor to sign a letter, um, an administrative grant. As you've been through many of those with Department of Local Affairs, is simply a letter detailing uh, the scope of the second project and a request for twenty five thousand, and we would match the remaining uh, re remainder of the fifty nine thousand seven hundred eighty. But the mayor. They request a letter that the mayor signs and we would uh, so tonight we request approval from the city council for the mayor to sign that happy to answer any questions um, before we move forward but just wanted to clarify two requests tonight any two yeah. motions is what you're asking for All right. yes do we have any questions regarding this All right. do we have a motion so i'll move to approve resolution 2021-32 transferring 89,250 dollars uh, from the contingency for the housing needs assessment and regulatory fee study. Second. Mm -hmm. okay. Councillor Harvey? Yes. Councillor Lenhart? Yes. Councillor Bremen? Yes. Councillor Cray? Yes. Councillor Buck? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Mike needs a motion allowing the mayor to sign a letter. Or an administrative or grant request. Grant. Yeah. So moved. Second. <laughs> Councillor Buck? Yes. Councillor Harvey? Yes. Councillor Bremen? Yes. Councillor Lenhart? Yes. Councillor Cray? Yes. Mission passes 5 0. Thank you. Now we're moving into our city manager's report. That's true. I'll just stay here then. I only have one item, and it's just a reminder of something we put in the, the update and mentioned before, but it was a short timeline. We are going to have uh, a trial of the resident cleanup day on this coming Saturday, and that would be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m at the city shops facility on at 900 Kiefer Avenue, 900 Kiefer Avenue. And between, so residents can bring a number of items to dispose of free of charge. There is a poster that's in the weekly update that's on our website and will be in this weekly update as well that does have a list of items that we are not accepting. It's the same list that uh, Grand Junction doesn't accept in their house to house um, uh, for the for the purpose of there are a number of fees associated with those when you take them to the landfill. So we are going to cover the costs of large uh, dumpster rollouts and 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 try that. We'd like to because it's a short short term and we're trying to add that in this year though, as it wasn't planned. We we just want to use this as a trial and, and hope to do to do more as we move forward and, and maybe even a different time of year. But we're um, we're excited to see how it goes this Saturday. So just a reminder of that, that's the only update I have tonight. All right, that's fine. Um, council reports and actions. Um, downtown board uh, hosted uh, an event, Cups at Suds. Uh, like a week, week ago, week and a half ago. And it was a pretty successful event. They raised $5,000 to to uh, help fight breast cancer. Um, I do have a question about, um, are we still enforcing like six feet on the sidewalks downtown? I, I did some walking and I was on the way here and I'm like, oh, it's kind of crowded right here. And I don't know if that's 
Is that still an issue that we're... Sorry. Um, yes, nothing has changed for that, but we do have times where things kind of creep out into that. And if, if you have any uh, that you notice, and, and we, we do try and periodically check, but we can have uh, Jesse Hess kind of take a look at that. And typically when that happens, usually it's resolved with a conversation with that business owner or whomever it may be. Um, and pretty simple. So okay. you can let me know if there's, if there's a few and we'll. Okay. Um, also, I, I noticed that we seem to lately in the pandemic, we have a lot of people at hangout park. Uh, are we having any problems with people long-term parking in in our lovely downtown city area? Oh, in like, as far as like this, this parking lot in the civic and, center. Yeah. Or streets. We did, we did have an issue with an, uh, with, with, one bus that was not registered that we that we that we worked with, um, the owner and uh, the landlord of where they were living, um, and I believe it was resolved. Uh, the most of the parking doesn't have much of a restriction uh, currently, so you can you know the the civic center parking lot can be there can be someone parked in there for multiple periods. There, there's a certain period of time if it lasts too long that, that we usually make contact with those vehicles. But um, we have seen more parking, but I think for the most part, we've had a couple Probably. issues where we've had to identify or work with with an owner, but most of those have worked out so far. Okay. I was just curious. I've been, you know, but you're right. You've, you've, I'm like, hey, a lot of people are camping around here. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make sure there weren't any problems. We have noticed there there have been times where, where we've noticed, you know, like one night something's happened and then they've been gone or something like that. I, I know. I know when we were leaving a council meeting one night here, there was a, a camper in the civic center parking lot, which is not allowed to, to camp necessarily. Okay. You can park your vehicle, but not a campground. That's all I got. All right. Thanks. Thanks yeah, that's it. Kyle? My meetings are forthcoming, so I don't have any to report either. Thanks, Kara. Um, the museum um, is looking for board members. So we've been. Uh, out beating the bushes. And um, so if you know of anybody that might be a good candidate, just let me know and I can pass it along. Um, police commission, there's a, a full board now and really a, a good group of folks there. Again, just the car break-ins, people leaving their vehicles unlocked. Um, it's a constant issue. Um, but things, yeah, things are going well there. I know we all got the email about the trick or treat street and possibly um, closing down the, the street during that event. Um, and, and it seems like it would be an easy, easy fix, um, especially the safety piece. I know if, if anybody walked down during that event, oh my gosh, it was it was jammed. It was probably the all, largest attendance we've ever had for yeah, trick or treats. We're at a standstill sure. all around the circle, all through town. So, um, yeah, I, I, I know you responded to that. So, yeah, I, I sent an, a second response because that's the first one I, I don't think addressed exactly what I was meaning, but we will definitely look into it with the police department with public works and just the safety factor and then talk with the chamber they're they're the they they're who host that event and look at what the dynamics would be of you know for most events um that close down roads there is a pretty significant expense of of that because you have to hire professional traffic control companies so so it's it, it depends on what we can do and 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 depending on what that closure will be, but we'll be, we'll look into that and discuss with all the parties because it is getting to a, a attendance rate where, uh, which is great. It's great to see, but that attendance rate has, has grown significantly um, over the years. And even though mainly they're on the sidewalks, when you have that many, it really starts bleeding over. And especially when you have children, they can easily uh, end up uh, too close to the traffic for sure. Is that something we could maybe partner with the trucker treat on the same day too? I mean, that would be another option because you're already shutting down some of the streets for that as well. 
True. As a board member on the chamber board, you might want to throw that out at him. I can throw that out. <laughs> I don't have a problem doing that. But those are no. those, both events are heavily attended. So probably by a lot of overlap too, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're usually close, close in uh, the time when those when those occur. But yeah, we will definitely talk with the with uh, the chamber. I meet with uh, the executive director of the chamber, uh, Kayla, on regularly. So yeah, that's it for me. Sorry. All right. Um, the only thing I have is I sent out an email to everybody, but I haven't heard back on boards and commission gifts. And if anybody had any ideas, normally we're spending between 20 to $25 uh, just to thank our uh, board members for their service. Um, so I know we've got money in our budget. Uh, it comes out of our council budget. And so normally we try and do that before the end of the year. So that way it's... So Lori knows this part. It's always like, okay, what do we what do we do this year? Because it's a rotation. I don't know. The metal gears and uh -huh. mm -hmm. do we have a price on those? Mm -hmm. What would you do? You know what that is, or are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got one. <laughs> Not off the top of my head, but I can look it up. What's an approximate? Do you? Well, we the, we received we received pricing on various sizes and various materials. So oh, all right, I, I, that's been a while, so I'm not quite sure. We also asked for prototypes, and we still haven't received them. That was quite a while ago. What about a like a gift certificate from local business? That, I guess then you'd be picking some and not picking up. <laughs> yeah, I think you get. <laughs> We've run into that change before, yeah. but yeah. and Deb, I think, really wants to do more, like more jackets or something where she has to get <laughs> sizes <laughs> and all that. The best are the best things we've ever done. Yeah. People wear them and they have a logo and they're great, but I know they're a pain in your butt. <laughs> best are mm. it's like, yeah, on the wall. Can I walk over a vest. What mm -hmm. do we do? We get to participate. Well, Mike and I have Usually talked a little bit about that because it's like council with all the different events we go to. I don't think we've ever done any type. I mean, I know I've gotten a polo shirt when Odette and I were going to governor's conference. Um, uh, but we talked about maybe pulling some money out of this fund to do something for council. So when we're out in public, we've got something that I got a shirt from you. Yeah. That... Well, and the, the, these gifts go to these gifts go to all board each year they go to all the boards and commission members the council members and the staff liaison so it's a it's a big group each time so we're at about 80 or 90 deb is that right mm. seven With our sizes, you could deal. <laughs> so that's something Mike and I talked a little bit about. So, I mean, this group would have to approve the spending on that. On ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you got a total? We, we, we would have to get, we would just get quotes on various vests and then make a decision. Gosh, it feels so hey, Shannon. To give money to like another company that of some local company you know what I mean like I mean we can't they use local like, they oh, use no, local. I know, but like we pick a local company but we can't pick a just like several restaurants you know? right. uh -huh. I guess you could put it out to bid and say okay which restaurant wants to give us the best deal on yeah like <laughs> I would like I'm 10 different restaurants what this thing's cost yeah okay is Shannon ready wait drum roll uh so the gear logos are about 12 inch uh, diameter 2475. We did ask for prototypes on March 18th, so I will follow up on that. Uh. <laughs> so we'll have them in 2023, is what you're saying, right? So that's right in our budget. There could be supply chain issues, right? Right. <laughs> there could be. As, as far as council goes, we've uh, for, for like a vest um, that could be worn, we've when we've attended various trade shows, uh, Loki, which is an, a, a local company in the, in the, in the Valley has actually 
given significant discounts. Um, and then we, you know, paid to have embroidered the, the logo on there. So that could be an option as well for the city council. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I mean, is everybody good if Shannon checks on like, years and we do something unique and different is that a head nod yeah. okay all right so there so let's find out i guess final pricing and if it has to go to 11 and a quarter inches to get us to that price point then <laughs> we may have to do that because the material cost increases so so we can follow up and just get a timeline because i know normally we're doing something end of the year or the first of the next year um, for that all right that's all I have. Um, so I appreciate you guys' input on that one. Uh, with that, uh, we're gonna, it's 8.17 p.m. We are going to adjourn. Mm -hmm. yes.